Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service of worship. Welcome to all those who are tuning in from their homes. Uh, Wade just told me that Steve requested that I be told that he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so we welcome all those who are tuning in uh, from a distance, and especially all of you who are here this morning, welcome. Our eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all peoples. We are glad to have you here. Special welcome to any who are visiting. We are thrilled that you have chosen to be with us and would ask that you just take a moment to sign that little yellow card in front of you so that we may greet you and get to know you. We're happy to have everyone here. I hope you had a blessed Christmas, and I hope you will have a wonderful New Year's as well. And we look forward to a new year being our congregation and this church and all of the events that will be taking place. Please plan to stay for just a little bit, I feel sure, after the worship service for our congregational meeting. We will be electing new church officers to start our new year, and we need you to vote on that, so please plan to stay. This is the last Sunday that we will be collecting for our Christmas joy offering, the denominational offering that benefits retired ministers and students in ethnic-related colleges. So if you haven't had an opportunity to give to that, please do so. It's also the last Sunday for the Giving Tree, which is completely full. I don't know where you'd put anything else anyway, but. Thank you to all of you for bringing in hats and gloves and scarves and mittens. Uh, it is a beautiful uh, exhibit of your generosity, so appreciate all of that. You'll notice on the back of your bulletin, uh, the prayer requests, uh, you'll see uh, added new this week uh, is Barbara Bai and family. Barbara lost a brother, Herman, uh, this week, and uh, she is with family to attend that service and be together. So please keep Barbara in your prayers as well as all of those listed there. I spoke with uh, Frank Jump yesterday, and he said that Dorothy has mobility, but it's hard for her to find words as a result of the stroke. So uh, they are still hoping for healing and restoration. He's asked that we pray for those two things, healing and restoration. So uh, please keep all of those folks in your prayers. Any other announcements for us this morning? The children are having a party next Saturday. And uh, that's from 10 to noon, and I know Emily and Carol Ann and others are planning fun things for them, so bring your children next Saturday. Any, anything else we need to know about today, or any other prayer, prayer requests? Okay. Well, great to have you all here. Let us worship God.
Will you join me now responsively in our call to worship? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Chief Justice, will you come light the Advent candles for us, please? And he will do that as we are singing hymn number 132. And shall we now join our hearts together in this prayer of the day? Let us pray. Saving God, lead us to embrace the infant Jesus. Guide us by your gracious light that we may welcome you into this world. Let us who seek redemption in this day prepare our hearts that we may believe the good news of Jesus receive the light of salvation, and live according to your word. Amen. Let us continue our prayer in silence. Amen. The light of salvation has come into this world and shines even in the darkness. Friends, the good news of Jesus Christ is that we are forgiven. and Christ has brought salvation to us. Let us give God the glory.
be seated. And I'll invite the children to join me as they come forward at this time. Good morning, Lena. Good morning, Hannah, Jana, Emily, Dexter. Good morning. I have a picture to show you today of a person I'm going to be talking about in the sermon. This is a story that's in the Gospel of Luke. It happens pretty soon after Jesus was born. His mother Mary and his father Joseph bring him to the temple and they meet this man. They meet this man. So let me ask you a question about this picture. Okay? They meet this man. Is this man old or young? Old. How can you tell? He has a white beard. Sorry, you guys. That's a dead giveaway, isn't it? He's, he's got a white beard, so he's old. Yeah. And um, what else do you see in this picture? A baby. What's he doing with this baby? He's holding him. You see the baby, Hannah? See the baby's head right here? Yeah, see that baby, Lena? See his little head there? Yeah. And what do you notice about this man's face? He looks like he's talking. Yeah, okay. Anything else you notice? What do you think he's what do you think he's saying? Look very closely at his face. Look very closely under his eye. What do you see under his eye? A tear. It's a tear. So, do you think this man is crying because he's sad? Or do you think he's crying because he's happy? It's kind of, we don't really know, do we? We don't know. This is Simeon. Simeon was a man who stayed in the temple in Jerusalem. And he was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to see the Messiah. And one day, Mary and Joseph brought him into the temple, and he knew. He knew. The Holy Spirit was on him, and he knew. It was Jesus, and he took that baby in his arms, and he said, God, thank you. This is what I've been asking for all my life, and now I finally get to see this baby. Thank you. Now I can, I can go, and I can be at peace. Thank you. And if you look carefully... There's something else going on in this picture. See all these colors around here? Do you see anything in those colors? I don't know. You have to look carefully. They're kind of hidden. Do you see a continent over here? A continent up here and down here? It's a map, Dexter. That's right. It's a map of what? What are all those continents for? For South America and North America? Well, this baby came into the world, didn't he? This baby came into the world. And what do you see in the middle of this baby? What does that look like, Hannah? What's that look like there? The middle of that picture, right on that baby. It's a baby. Yeah, it's a baby. What do you think's on that baby? A star. A star. A star. Which is what? It's a light, isn't it? 
That's what Simeon said. This baby's come into the world to be a light, a light for us. To what? Show us the way. Yeah. So this is Simeon. Isn't that a cool name, Simeon? Do you know anybody named Simeon? I don't either. And the baby Jesus, and he picked him up and he said, thank you, God. Now I've, I've seen what I've been waiting to see all my life. Thank you. Yeah. Great story. Can you all see this? Come up and look at it. The artist is Ron DiCiani, and it's called Simeon's Moment. Finally, his moment. Would you come say a prayer with me? Thank you. Thank you. Everybody get in the circle. Thank you. God, thank you so much for sending your son. And we do believe that he is a light for our world. And thank you for Simeon, who trusted you, who listened to you. And when Mary and Joseph and that baby came, he knew it. Thank you for his faith and his patience. And God, thank you that just as Simeon held that baby, you, God, hold each one of us because you love us so much. Go with us through this week. Amen. I have this picture for you. I thought you might like to look at it a little bit more. So there you go. Here's one for you, Emily. Hannah, here's one for you. Nina, there's one for you. And Jane, one for you. Okay, thank you. See you later. Caroline Dale for singing for us this morning.
Thank you so much. Our scripture reading this morning, our lesson comes from Isaiah. Listen now for God's word to you. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And from the Gospel of Luke, we continue with this portion of the Christmas story. When the time came for her purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, 
filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing hymn number 110. Please be seated. The season of Advent, our season of waiting for the birth of Christ, is now over. We spend a month waiting, going through each day, asking God to Prepare us for Christ's coming, asking that Christ be born in us. We revisit the Christmas story of prophecies and angels and miraculous births. We light one candle each week as we wait for the lighting of that final candle, the Christ candle, when Christ is born. It's a long month of preparation and planning and waiting. Why is waiting hard? Software tester Marie Cruz says, waiting is hard for several reasons. We don't know what the outcome will be, like waiting for test results. And that increases anxiety. Waiting can be certain versus uncertain. It's easier to wait when we know that our plane that got canceled has a next flight scheduled versus a delay that seems infinite. Solo waiting feels longer than group waiting. Bereaved individuals find their grief and loneliness lessened when they can share it with others, as opposed to isolating alone. Waiting can be active, as we're waiting, but we have work to do and the time goes more quickly. Waiting can be passive, as when we have no control of time and it seems to go so slowly. 
70-year-old Glenn Simmons spent 48 years in an Oklahoma prison for a murder he did not commit. Upon being released, he said, don't let anybody tell you that it can't happen because it really can. 51-year-old and homeless Michael Dodd booked on a November 29, 2023 charge of probation violation and property theft hanged himself in the Hamilton County Jail. His name was read at the Chat Foundation's memorial service for the homeless deceased this year. The ability to wait differs between persons. Our scripture for today introduces us to two other people who were waiting. Luke tells us that Mary and Joseph took the baby to Jerusalem to observe the Jewish ritual of purification and dedication. While they were there, they meet two elderly people who have been waiting a very long time to see the Messiah. Simeon, a righteous and devout man, has been looking forward to the consolation of Israel. He listens carefully to the Holy Spirit who rests on him, reveals to him, and guides him. How does one listen to the Spirit? We ask for God to help us hear. We pay attention. We read scripture. We let others speak. Simeon had learned to discern the difference between his own impulses and the leading of God. Luke introduces Simeon with a word that is normally translated waiting, pros de komenos. The Greek interpretation is more like ready and willing to receive. It is a waiting with expectation. The term expresses an eagerness to welcome. Simeon recognizes that the parents coming into the temple are bringing with them the child Jesus, who he has been waiting for. He is so ready to welcome that child. He takes the infant in his arms. The only person in the Bible we are explicitly told held the baby Jesus in his arms. And then picture this old man with this baby. Is he laughing with joy? Is he crying with tears streaming down his face at what God has done? And then Anna, also old and approaching the end of her days, adds her own joy and praise to the moment. Both give further confirmation to Mary that this child is something special. Both have been waiting, waiting with uncertainty, Waiting solo and waiting passively. Now here he is, the one they have been waiting for. But what do they see, really? Commentator John Stendhal says, 
It's just a little child. A powerless, speechless newcomer to the world. Whatever salvation this baby might work is still only a promise and a hope. Whatever teaching he might offer will remain hidden for many years. Nothing has happened yet. Herod still sits on the throne, and Caesar governs from afar. The world looks as it did before. Yet Simeon stands there in grateful wonder. It is the future he holds in his arms. He has seen it and touched it. And Anna will soon be telling everybody about this baby who she saw for just a few minutes. Pros de Comenas transforms the concept of waiting. Waiting often generates impatience and irritation. Think of ourselves in traffic or grocery lines, or with an overdue baby. We grit our teeth, we try to hold on until we can get past whatever the current trial is. Proste Comenas invites us to change waiting from excruciating endurance to active anticipation. It encourages us to think about not getting out, but welcoming in. We can shift our mindset from wanting to escape to being ready to receive. And Simeon and Anna wouldn't know how Jesus' life was going to unfold. They would be gone before he even started his ministry 30 years from now. They simply received what they had asked for, and it was enough. Don't let anybody tell you that it can't happen, because it really can to me, that kind of waiting is what we also refer to as hope. It's a waiting with the belief that it is going to happen. As we approach a new year, I'd like us to think about what are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for? Waiting as in eager to welcome. Waiting as in ready to receive. Waiting as in hope. In the belief that it can happen. Would you take a moment and think about what you're waiting for? What are we waiting for? And then would you just, would you call them out? Just call them, let's just put them out there. What are you waiting for? Peace. I'm sorry? Good health. Test reports. Solutions. Tomorrow.
spring. Her basketball game. Clear vision. God, we too are waiting. We are still waiting. We are waiting for you to make yourself known in all of these places, in all of these lives. God, we expect you. We look forward to seeing you and hearing you. And we trust that in faith it will happen. For Jesus' sake, amen. Will you join with me now in this responsive prayer? As children of God and heirs of the promise, let us pray to the Lord, saying, For all who have been baptized into Christ, that they may shine like the dawn and light the way of salvation for Jesus' sake. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For Chattanooga and all places of human interaction, that kindness may abound, compassion prevail, and harmony endure, let us pray to the Lord. For those hurting with illness and hardship, that they may receive healing for their bodies, release from their burdens, and ending of their brokenness, let us pray to the Lord who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Stand and sing together hymn number 546.
go forth from this place, remember that the light has come. And the light rests upon each one of us, that we too may be light for our world. May the grace of God, the light of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Amen, Jonathan. Thank you. Amen. Uh, friends, thank you for staying. Uh, let us open our congregational meeting.